Andrew's um, photography, without Andrew's photography, this would be a pretty much a waste of time. Um, what I want to do to begin with is to explain, is to share with you why Barnes Common, Friends of Barnes Common and Butterfly Conservation are in, inextricably linked for me. Um, about the time um, my husband and I moved to Barnes in about 2013, and about the time I retired from paid working life, um, I went to a presentation about the work of butterfly conservation. Uh, the chief executive at the time showed a photo of a typical British countryside like this one. Green fields, rolling hedgerows, um, and look at that lovely landscape and all beautifully emerald green. You could almost hear the audience sigh with appreciation. And then he hit us with the truth. This is an ecological desert. I was stunned by this statement. I had been conscious of seeing fewer butterflies flying around in the, over the last decades. The moth snowstorm in my car headlights had become a memory. I just hadn't realized we'd created ecological deserts around us in our own country. But it hadn't always been like this. Here am I on the left. Oh. The, age of, uh, the age of about eight in 1960, with the white butterfly net my father made for me. And armed with my net, I would go out wandering on the rough ground beyond our garden in Surrey. And the village boys would shout at me, you won't find any fishes in there. But I ignored them as I became absorbed in my own world of clouds of blues, skippers and coppers. Miriam Rothschild, the great scientist, described butterflies as dream flowers which have broken from their stalks and escaped into the sunshine. Her sentence perfectly described my experience those tens of summers ago. But now reports from worldwide speak of insect apocalypse since the 1970s. There are so few butterfly species, some 59 in the UK, that we notice very quickly when their numbers fluctuate. Butterflies and moths are bellwethers of changing conditions. They respond rapidly and sensitively to subtle habitat or climate changes. And in their presence or absence, butterflies and moths act as representatives for the diversity and responses of other wildlife. And butterflies and moths are some of the hardest hit amongst the insects. Since 1976, when butterfly conservation first started making Taking, making records, butterfly abundance in the UK across all species has declined by 50%. And the 900 species of larger moths have declined by 33%. So my concern is, okay, lots of people have seen butterflies today, which is great, but how many people actually see butterflies and moths with them declining? And I worry about this. If people don't see butterflies, they won't care about them and they won't look after them. And I want more people to see more butterflies more often, which is why I agreed to become the chair of butterfly conservation, because that's my mantra. More but people, more butterflies, more often. And also why I'm a volunteer recorder with but Friends of Barnes Coleman also for butterfly conservation. And as you can see, if you're not covered up with all the pictures, I have swapped the butterfly net for butterfly binoculars which have also revolutionized my ID skills. This is a familiar picture. So we in the UK, and it's, it's distressing to say this, now live in one of the most nature depleted, depleted countries in the world. 189th out of the 218, according to the 2018 Living Planet Report from the World Wide Fund for Nature. So 189th out of 218. And 50% of our population has no access to green space in any one week. So Barnes Common is therefore a precious landscape. Cars, yes, urban, suburban sort of, but no industrial agriculture and no industrial developments, no pesticides and no fertilizers. So that's setting you up for the story. And so here it begins, one wet March day. Well, in fact, it started a bit before that because um, soon after we moved to Barnes, 
I went along to one of the Barnes charity open mornings and migrated naturally as a butterfly person would to the FOBC stand. I asked Mike Hildesley whether anyone was monitoring the butterflies on the common. He said not yet and put me onto the man in the center of the picture, Adrian Podmore. Adrian sussed out my commitment to butterflies and because he knows the commons wildlife so well, he and Bill Downey from Butterfly Conservation's Surrey and Southwest London branch together proposed a butterfly monitoring route, which is called the transect across the common. So in March, 2016, here we are in the rain, Stephanie and me with Adrian, on, and we were, we were about to walk the proposed transect. Um, no butterflies, of course, that day. So what is a transect? Transect is a set route uh, walked once a week for 26 weeks in the year. So then between April the 1st, which is tomorrow, and the 30th of September. You can actually walk in and record in March and in October. And I did walk yesterday because I know that the, the days coming up are going to be colder. Um, so I will record for yesterday. While walking, we count the number of adult butterflies within a virtual box two and a half meters on either side of ourselves and five meters ahead on the path. The butterflies of course need to be flying or basking, otherwise we won't know they're there. So we walk only on warm and mostly sunny days around midday. Quite exacting conditions some weeks in this country. Stephanie and White and I are the, the initial transect buddies. We are now a group of five committed walkers. We cover for each other so that we record each week unless the weather is below minima. The Barnes Common transect on the left is, is a three kilometer walk bordered by Ranelagh Avenue on the north and the railway line to the south through areas of lowland acid grassland and secondary woodland. The orchard transect, which is at the bottom right, once the former goods yard is led by Janice Harris, who's here tonight. Janice started last year and FOBC's own Will Dartnell leads a third transect around the leg of mutton. So the transects on Barnes Common are breeding, which is great. For me, it has been a lovely way to meet local people with similar interests and a great way to get to know the common. I also find watching nature intently for several hours a meditational and restorative experience. But where do the records end up? We upload each week's uh, records on, um, onto the UK Butterfly Monitoring website. This database records the abundance and distribution of populations of butterflies going back to 1976. Since there are over 3000 transects and other surveys over the whole UK, we build up an understanding of butterfly populations. Butterfly conservation uses the data to build trends and indicators, which are then used as evidence for influencing policy in the UK and also for reporting on the state of nature. And of course, this is deeply important with the new environmental bills going through. Our recording in Barnes since 2016 has shown us what an important site Lon London Barnes Common is. 27 butterfly species we, we log each year. Nature under our noses and in London. Indeed, we probably see more butterflies in Barnes than some of our friends in the so-called countryside. Places like Barnes Common are indeed important. And as I said, precious. These are the totals um, over the last four, the four years in 1920, sorry, in 2020, 1920. In 2020, um, we didn't walk the Barnes Common transect because social distancing made it almost impossible. But I had, as I told some of you, I had a, the first walks, walk yesterday, lots of brimstone, small white, comma, and peacock. I gather orange tips are out today, which is great. The Barnes Butterfly League winners are Meadow Brown, Small Essex Skipper, Gatekeeper, Large and Small Whites, Speckled Wood, Small Copper, Holly Blue, and Orange Tip. The lowest scores are Small Tortoiseshell, Marbled White, Painted Lady, Large Skipper, Ringlet, and Brown Argus. And in fact, last year, um, Janice did walk the um, orchard from July to the end of September. 
and she recorded 19 species and 178 total individuals. And the, I think the orchard is a lovely spot. And I stood in for her when she was away one week and I recorded marbled white and painted lady on one day. So I was very privileged. Um, this is a year chart. Um, in in, um, in uh, 2018, butterfly conservation held its 50th anniversary event on Barnes Common, thanks to um, Friends of Barnes Common being keen to, to, to partner us in this. Um, we couldn't have done it without them. Um, and we produced, Butterfly Conservation produced this flight chart for the event, which we handed out. Uh, and it shows the flight times of the Barnes butterfly species and summarizes some of their characteristics. It's actually a jolly useful um, sheet. And it also, it gives you an idea when you might see, most likely to see certain species. But of course, that varies from year to year according to the weather. And now we come to what we've been waiting for. And I must at this point, the tribute and thanks to Andrew Wilson, our own resident photographer. I take some pics on my iPhone, um, but nothing to compare with Andrew's. And I've been indulgent in showing his photographs to the best advantage. So they're all, I'm tried to have them as large, large um, screenshots. Thank you, Andrew. And as I said earlier, this talk would be pretty pointless without any pictures. Um, I have ordered the slides. Um, so you can imagine you're going to see 27 species a slide, um, according to the order through the year when the butterflies emerge more or less. Although of course, depending on whether they're single brooded or, or, or several broods, the flight periods will overlap. Um, a male brimstone like this was my first butterfly of this year, which I saw on the 10th of March, flying down, down our street, Castleknow. This species hibernates as an adult and therefore emerges as soon as the weather is warm enough. And it's out in force this week. It's a beautiful shot with the female sort of pale green settled and the male who's a luscious um, buttercup um, yellow is flying in. Um, comma, small tortoiseshell and peacocks also hibernate as adults, which is why we see them early when the weather gets warm. So some, somebody was saying that they've seen peacocks. Um, yesterday I saw a peacock um, also saw a comma, another adult hibernator. This is obviously, this um, peacocks have a two broods and this is a second brood because of course it's on butterfly bush. The butterfly bushes aren't usually out at this time of year. In fact, they're not. Um, when you're seeing these, these butterflies, peacocks flying, they've, they've got a very black underside. And so they, they're strong flyers and they appear quite black when they're, when they're flying. And that tends to tell you whether it's one of these. These lovely butterflies. Um, also, this one would this one would could be out now. Um, and somebody told me yesterday saw one on Hutchinson Bank um, near Croydon. Um, and this one is is from the second brood. Uh, these have had dramatic declines. Um, it is thought that it may be a parasitoid fly that has come into England as a result of climate change. These um, butterflies they they have a gliding flight and they sort of were from time to time, and they tend to track up and down um, an area of field or whatever. But they're just such beautiful butterflies. This is a comma. I didn't see many of these as a child. And this is a good, good story. Their numbers have been increasing probably because of climate change. They have a typical skimming flight, and you can see that sort of burnished orange when the wings are flat out. Um, and um, they, they tend to have quick changes of direction. So they, it's quite a typical flight. And then of course, the reason it's called a comma, it's because of this underside. Can you see my, um, my cursor? Yes, yes. Yep. Good, great, good. Now, somebody has seen, Andrew saw an orange tip today. Well, here we go. Here's the, here's the male on the left. These, this is, these, 
so we're actually coming now to the white butterflies, what we call the white butterflies. And they can be rather quite a bit of fun identifying these in flight. But like birds, and as I've described with the Vanessids, butterflies have different behavior um, when they're flying. Um, they, you can distinguish them, although of course it's easier if they're settled. The orange tip is the, the spring butterfly. It only has one brood, emerges uh, round about now from a pupa, um, which, which it overwintered, and flies only for a couple of months, and then that's it. Uh, the male is obviously the one that's distinctive. The female has um, black markings on its tip, but the, the both sexes have that beautiful underside, which is very, very typical of the orange tip. Uh, here we have, I'm just going to move, move the pictures. Here we have um, a small white. This is it's a rather more delicate looking um, butterfly, this sort of pale, um, almost powdery um, yellow here, and, very, and rather faint, dis indistinct black markings. And this is this this is these are flying around now too. Here we come back to the to the raucous butterflies. This is another. This is a common migrant. It does hibernate as an adult in the UK, um, but it's more more commonly a, a, a migrant. Uh, it has a very rapid flight, like a peacock, but actually the underside is quite ornate. And you can often see a, a slight flash of red while it's in flight, so you can distinguish it from a peacock. This is the early blue we will see soon, the holly blue, often flying around trees and hedges and also in your gardens, gorgeous smoky blue. This male um, is on holly, which is the food plant of the first brood of caterpillars. The second brood feeds on ivy flower buds. And the females um, have more, uh, more black edging around the, around the wing tips. What is interesting is the underside of the holly blue is very distinctive. It's quite different to the common blue, often, often confused, but is not confusing. Um, and if you recall this when we get to the common blue, so this is a sort of smoky blue with black smud smudges. Speckled wood, a favorite of mine, haunts sunny patches in woodland. You'll typically see two male butterflies twirling, actually skirmishing round each other up a shaft of sunlight or basking on a sunny leaf as here. These are lovely pictures. Another underside of a white, this is the green veined white. If you remember the small white had that sort of smoky yellow look, this is this, the the, the green veined white has these, this very typical veining on the underside of the hind wing and also veining, black veining um, on, the, on the upper wings. They're, they are haunts, they haunt um, damper margins and they tend to parole up and down. So they have a slightly different uh, flight from the small and large whites, which tend to be stronger flyers and more erratic. They tend to sort of veer around a bit. Here we have a large white. Um, there are the numbers of our resident individuals are boosted considerably by um, migrants from continental Europe in the summer. The males are the same size as the green veined white and small whites. So small and large doesn't actually help with um, distinguishing between them. But large whites have a sort of glossier look. I think you can see that the, the, the black markings are much more definite than the small white and the green veined white. Um, and the blackness um, continues down the side of the, of, the, um, of the wing, as you can see here. This is the female, it has black spots. The male have no spots. This is a gorgeous picture again. Ah, always an excitement seeing this little jewel. Green hair streak. In flight, it's one of the small brown jobs of the butterfly world. But when it settles, usually on gorse or low scrub, we suddenly see the glory of its underside. 
It's the first hair streak to emerge in April and May and only has one brood. So it's a short flight period of six weeks. We see no more than a handful in any one year in barns and then only in certain hotspots. Another of the small brown jobs in flight. Um, it's a very fast flyer, this one. And um, usually you'll catch it just out of the corner of your eye. But if you can keep with it and uh, wait for it to settle, then you can ID it. And it shows this wonderful burnish color. It's an exquisite, exquisite little butterfly. This is an exquisite picture. The reddish sorrel plants, sorrel plants, which we see in May are its food plant. So seeing these areas tramped out last year was a bit distressing. I, um, I'm slightly nervous about how many of the adults we'll see this year. This is the smallest of the brown butterflies. It's called a small heath. It's quite pale. It has a weak flight close to the fine grasses in the acid grassland areas. Um, and it tends to close its wings when it settles like this. One of my treasured memories of a transect walk on Barnes Common is the shock. It was like a shock of coming upon a small colony of five of these little butterflies dancing in the low grass um, alongside Rocks Lane. Um, sadly, they're declining rapidly. These are common blues, but not so common in London. So we're always very pleased to see these in May, June and July. Um, they are, they're, they're the blue that you'll see flying over grassland rather than around trees. Um, the male here can be strikingly deep violet and it has white fringes around the, um, around the wings. Um, the Adonis blue, which we don't have on Barnes Common has black markings around the wing. And a, and a slightly different blue, but this is, can be very striking. And if you remember the underside, this is the underside of the common blue, which is quite different from the holly blue, if you can recall it. And this one, we were very excited. We first recorded it in 2018. Um, it's originally a chalk grassland um, butterfly because the caterpillar feeds on rock roses or usually feeds on rock roses, but it's extended its range because the caterpillars decided to become adapted to feeding on geraniums as well. So that's why we get to see it. At first, when we saw this, um, we thought it was a common blue um, because same sort of size, but when it settled, it stayed for its photograph. So that's really quite a, 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 a sort of behavior that you expect to see. Um, common blues don't tend to settle around and they fly away very quickly and erratically at the slightest disturbance, but these guys hang around for their picture. They have no blue against their bodies. Um, like this, if I go back to the common blue, you can see the female has, um, has, has blue here, whereas the um, brown argus doesn't. This is the first of the golden skippers to emerge um, in about May, June. This is the large skipper. It has um, it has dappled forewings here, you can see, and through the hind wings. And they do they like to perch them them they perch on um, low shrubs so that it's perching on a on a bramble. This is the one grassland species on Barnes Common that that, um, may, that requires me to carry a clicker counter. Um, we can see anything up to sort of 60, 70 species on Van Buren, uh, 60, 70 individuals on Van Buren Meadow at any one walk. The males are darker brown, females with more orange. So this is, this is a female. And it has a single spot here, single white spot. Um, when we come to the gatekeeper, you'll notice that the gatekeeper has two white spots here. So sometimes you need to have that distinguishing feature because they vary in size. And here we have the painted lady, such a treat to see this one. This is a regular migrant uh, between May and September. And this this um, powerful butterfly flies from West Africa 
to our shores over some six generations. And you may remember that 2019 was a painted lady summer in the UK. And we, and we recorded four in separate weeks on Barnes Common. It's a very strong fly. If you see a butterfly of about this sort of coloring streaking past you at that, at, in between May and September, it's, it's likely to be a painted lady. And another gorgeous, um, this is a real summer butterfly, June, July. Um, we'll see it over the meadows and also the orchard is very good for, has lots and lots of nectar plants for, for the marbled white. This has been uh, spreading over London um, in the last few years. And it's, it's actually one of the browns, it's not one of the white butterflies, it's not a purity. Um, it's one of the browns, but you can actually, although it flies like a brown butterfly, uh, like a meadow brown a bit, um, it, you can actually see the white, the, the black, black and white checkering in flight, if you look carefully. Helps to have some binoculars. Now we come to the ringlet. You don't see so many of these. This is um, only one brood. Um, overwinters as, as a larva, as a caterpillar in grass, and then pupates in June, and then comes out in about July. It's, and this is a real, another real grassland butterfly for Van Buren Meadow. It has a rather more bobbing flight than Meadow Brown, and appears darker in flight, although older ragged ones can be confused with Meadow Browns. And of course, when it settles, you can see the eye spots, which do vary in size and, and, and sex. Two more golden skippers. Um, um, until um, I think it was about a decade ago, um, these were considered to be the same species, but now there are, they're, they're, they have distinguished between the small skipper and the Essex skipper. However, it is really quite hard to tell the difference. And sometimes when you're counting, we, have, we, we count small skippers when we're sure, Essex skippers when we're not sure, and small Essex together um, as, as one name. Uh, um, if, we, if we can't distinguish. This one is definitely an Essex skipper because it's got black on the underside of the antennae. This one, if I saw it like this, I'd call it a small Essex skipper. It doesn't have the black underside, but we can't really see whether it does or it doesn't. Now we come to the two other um, hair streaks we see in barns. This one's the white letter hair streak, and this is actually how you will see it. They are not, they are not um, transect species because they naturally fly in and around the tops of trees. Um, but they are recorded sometimes on the transect when they come down to drink or feed as this one did for Andrew. So in at about midday, the, uh, towards the end of June in 2017, I had my first very distinctive sighting of a couple of small dark triangular shapes circling around each other at the tops of the elms on Rocks Lane. These are the males, the females are sitting in the tree. So if when we see something like this, when we're monitoring white letter hair streaks, this is a definitive sighting. The caterpillars feed on elms and between 1996 and 2016, it was assumed um, a decline of 90% in numbers over the UK because Dutch elm disease had killed off all the great elms, the great English elms that is. Um, butterfly conservation therefore made it a priority species, but then realized over the last few years through monitoring that, work, that the white letter hair streak was being overlooked and that they were resident among hybrid elms, often used in street planting. So there are a number of street planted elms all over, um, certainly over Surrey where the, um, the work has been done, which have resident populations of white letter hair streaks. Um, I was listening to the leader of this work last week, in fact, the same Bill Downey who walked the transect with us in March 2016, and I could see dots on the map over Barnes, where Stephanie and I did some careful monitoring of all the elms in Barnes in 2017. White letter hair streaks are now on the suckering English elms and the witch elms along Rocks Lane, the dead witch elm by Barnes Station, which is very sad because it had a, quite a few of them, and on the leg of mutton and in the small profit dock garden. So they're quite widespread in, in, in barns. And this is the third 
hair streak, the purple hair streak. And this is not a transect species either, because again, in high summer, you'll see it um, flying in and out in colonies of silvery butterflies amongst the foliage and high up in the upper branches of oak trees. And if you are um, near the great oaks in Van Buren's, in high summer, you might see me standing stock still around 8 p.m. in the evening, counting butterflies. In the hot summer of 2018, there were hordes of these um, species, and many came down to nectar, which is how Andrew got this picture. This is a female basking in the sun, gorgeous purple on the, on the four wings. The males are brilliant mauve all over their wings. Quite a difficult um, picture to get. Um, well done, Andrew. So we're coming, gatekeepers are a sign that summer is moving to the equinox uh, when these, these burst out. They're smaller than meadow browns and the, the orange is more intense. And we actually have had some very high counts there are two, if you remember on the meadow brown, there was one spot in the, in the, in the, in the uh, black um, eye spot. There are, these two, there are two white spots in the black, um, in the gatekeeper. And then there is one slide that we don't have because we haven't photographed it on Barnes Common and that's the clouded yellow. Very few are seen here and therefore we have no, comp no picture, but we have seen them on, so they're included in the 27 species. I saw one last year in Surrey on Denby's hillside, and they're migrants from warmer parts of Europe, so they don't survive our cold winters. We can record any Lepidoptera we see on the transect, so butterflies or moths. Um, sometimes it depends on how many butterflies there are as to whether we have time to record the moths. But some of them, some of the day flying moths, of course, are very noticeable, and so we do record them. And this Jersey tiger is very noticeable in high summer in gardens and all over the common. Used to be confined to South Devon, um, but has spread and especially around London. And actually this, uh, when it flies, this has a brilliant flash of orange and it can be much, much more red, redder, much redder than that, um, from the, depending on the individual. Gorgeous, gorgeous, um, very pretty, pretty moth. Um, the cinnabar, and of course its caterpillars of the yellow and black uh, on ragwort, which we see in the summer. There are some um, day flying moths which can cause confusion with butterflies, so I've just put a couple of these in. Um, one of these is called the Mother Shipton. Moths have particularly wonderful names, and the reason it's called Mother Shipton is that because uh, some lepidopterists decided that the four wings looked like a witch's face. I suppose you can. You can see the nose there, can't you? You see, yeah. Wonderful imaginations. And then a lovely picture of the Burnet companion, um, also sometimes confused with um, skippers. But certainly, very beca partly because of its sort of very orange hind wings. And this is a bit of a surprise. The London Natural History Society collates the 40 transects done by butterfly conservation across Greater London. Their report for 2019 has just been published. A bit slow, but and they record 39 species. So we have a potential for another 13 species of butterflies on Barnes. This is always my hope. So each week's walk always has the excitement of the possibility of seeing new sightings amongst the meetings with old friends. One experienced walker reported a dark green fritillary over the orchard last year, but we couldn't verify it without a picture. But this one is also possible, it's the silver wash fritillary. It's a photo that I took um, with an, an individual who'd flown into our kitchen and um, was fluttering against the wall, uh, against, the, against the window, which was very odd. I was, it was such a surprise. So they are around unless somebody introduced this, which I don't suppose so. And then just to end the, the end the butterflies, this is an award-winning shot of Andrews of a battered old small copper taken in October, the last of the summer butterflies. 
And I don't want to leave out, I, I wanted to make a plug for the night flyers as well. Um, one night in uh, July 2018, um, Adrian um, and um, a butterfly conservation um, um, person called Les Evans Hill, who helped with our ID, we set up a, a moth trap in my garden and left it overnight. And in the morning, we had 33 species of moths, which is very exciting. And this is actually a really good thing to do because the moths, of course, come to you. You don't have to go to the butterflies. And it's great for children. Um, and of course, they're set free after we've ID'd them. And these are, again, pictures by Andrew of the various, various moths we, we um, caught that night. So I have actually got a moth trap now. I borrowed this one. And this is my final slide, which is actually showing um, the iRecord app. Um, this is really effective for what we call um, opportunistic records, which is a sighting that you can record anywhere, anytime, any place. These records all contribute to our knowledge of butterfly and moth populations. Uh, launched in 2014, um, it's the, we've, we've had over half a million butterfly records submitted by 14,000 pieces, people. Um, this is the new version, so that if you have iRecord on your iPhone now, it will automatically update. Um, you'll need to get, a, get, uh, get, to, get to work out how, it's, um, how it actually works, um, because it's rather different from last year's. And you can also record more including um, eggs, larvae, pupae, and also other animal groups. So anybody who's interested. So here we are, I've come to an end. It's, uh, it's definitely been the 45 minutes, sorry. Um, and I'd like to um, thank you all um, at 